Evening, everyone. Lovely to see some faces in the chat or some names in the chat already. I'm just uh, going to wait for a quick thumbs up from Mr. G, who's in the other room, to tell me whether or not everyone can hear and see me. And then I'll do some shout outs and say hellos on this dark and windy Wednesday night. So I'm being very quiet, waiting for Steve to even bother to check that I can be heard. Hi, Ali. Hi, Melanie. Hi, Liz. Hi, Naneka. I thought you'd be having a busy having a nervous breakdown somewhere, getting all your prep done for uh, setting off tomorrow. Uh, hi, Ali, Liz, Laura. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. Steph, I'm guessing you can hear me, but I can hear Mr. G. Well, let me comment. It oh. sounds fine. Oh, cool. <laughs> I've obviously blocked Steve from commenting. Very sensible, in my opinion. Uh, I can <laughs> Oh, great. Julie. Oh, lovely. It's great to see so many of you this evening. And uh, hope you're all well. Hope your week's going well. It's been a busy one, as usual, here at Funky Fossil. Um, just kind of recovering from uh, last Friday's craft battle with Tony. Who claims she won? I cannot comment further. Uh, then I was at the demo day at Stamps by Me shop on Saturday. So I uh, had lots of fun meet, meeting and playing with crafty goodies all day Saturday. And now uh, this week, the kind of the build up and the focus is on getting ready for Naneka's new collection, which is stunningly gorgeous. And I'm going to um, show you the products and also um, some rather uh, lovely samples uh, this evening and that collection click with love will be launching it'll be launching on um crate and craft uh on monday I'm, I'm trying to get my dates right which is the 6th of november and i've got shows at three o'clock and seven o'clock so i hope you can join me for that there will be lots of inspiration between now and then so you will uh have a lot, lots of uh, opportunities to be very tempted to get your order placed when um, the products become available and um i'm looking forward to it it's a very different collection in relation to um I think I said in my newsletter this morning, I think it's one of our prettiest collections of the year um, and it's actually got flowers on it, you know, so we're, we're already kind of uh, going right off script for, for Funky Fossil and it's a lovely, light, um, delicate, elegant collection um, and it's, it's, just a, it's just beautiful. And Nuneka's not on the live uh, this evening, another watching, so she'll be in the chat and able to kind of um, heckle me, I'm sure. Uh, but I'm having real internet problems again um, here. And um, so every time I have done a live with one of the designers coming in, it seems to kind of fall over. And I just didn't want to risk it tonight because um, with all the, the stormy weather, and my wonky internet i thought i'll just i'll just do it direct but Naneka's here and she can answer questions and be will be loving hearing all your responses um yes it is it's three o'clock thank you liz uh the show's on monday at three o'clock and seven o'clock uk time uh nunu so you'll be able to i don't know if we'd be back by then Naneka's going to, just to explain, give you a bit of context, um, Naneka's going to a big, big cafe in Barcelona. Setting off tomorrow, she's there all weekend doing classes uh, and working with um, a Spanish store that carries a lot of our products. And she will be um, also um, able to, to share this collection there in, in Spain as well over the weekend. Um, so she and uh, Alvaro, who have been putting the whole fair um, stand and all the products together, are super busy, as well as, of course, the classes. So um, I don't know if Nanek will be back on Monday, back home on Monday to watch, but um, I'm hoping she'll be able to watch back. Hey, Jane. Good, good to... I haven't seen your order yet, Jane. I haven't forgotten. I haven't sent it. Uh, lovely to see you. I hope, you, hope you're well. Um, 
It is. It's a funky fossil weekend, Necker, isn't it? You've got a whole stand full of goodies. Julie, lovely to see you. Yes, um, I, th I think I saw a comment about Tony will uh, like the flowers on this collection, and she has given it her seal of approval. Uh, so it has been, uh, it has, it has passed the Tony test, and is sufficiently pretty to have her blessing. Oh, have you sent my stencils, Donna? Thank you. Bless her, Donna. <laughs> Message me this week um, to say. You know, I do love your stencil, Sarah, but in my latest order, you sent me 10. I can't remember which design it is, Donna. You sent me 10 of a design. And so she's sending them back to me. I, I was very rude. I, I, I think she should uh, use them all, but she's got, she had 10 of the same design in her package. <sighs> I don't make life easy for myself, do I? Right. Oh, I am going to send it, Jane. I just, I'm just needing to get to the uh, to the laser cut to put the MDF on there. But I am, I'm on it. Um, right, let's should we have a look. Should we have a look at this collection? So, so cool. So I'm going to um, do a turny around thing on the camera. Let's let us see whether uh, that works and does what I need it to. Um, phone. I think that's right. Oh. Oh, I did do it. I did do it. I did do it. Fantastic. Look at this. I'll show you this, these in a second. Oh. I'm hoping the lighting's okay because it's a, um, it's really dark in the, in the kind of office today. And I've got, I've got lights on, um, but I'm hoping you'll be able to really um, get the true benefit of the beautiful kind of palette that Nunek has put together on this collection in the lighting I've got available. Olga has done an amazing reel with these uh, products um, and I haven't loaded it up but I will be sharing it um, after this live so you can see all of the all of the uh, collection you'll see and actually in her reel she does a complete flick through of all the papers so you'll be able to see how beautiful they are so if the, if the lighting isn't quite doing it justice tonight then do um, do stay tuned because you'll be able to see it again before um, uh, before Monday. You'll be able to see it lots of times before Monday. Where do we start? There will be Rob Bonds, Jane. Uh, yes, and they are beautiful. And we're completely out of summer twilight Rob Bonds. And I promise you, um, if, you if you've now uh, become as addicted as me, these Rob Bonds are, are um, a further step on that, uh, on that journey. Hi, Julie. Lovely to see you. Right, let's start with... Let's start with the stamps because they kind of start telling the story and then we'll, we'll go with the papers and other, uh, other elements that complete the collection. So there are, um, Nuneka, when, uh, when Nuneka and I were talking about a new collection, we were like, well, keep it small. We apparently are unable to do small collections. It kept growing. Um, so this collection has uh, four stamps or four stamp sets in it so let me let me uh, show you them in more detail so this is the a5 and it's called i'm never quite sure how to say bokeh bokeh i think it's bokeh bokeh flowers so of course bokeh being that beautiful um effect you get in photography where you get that light flare and those beautiful kind of soft colors behind images um and this is the kind of the whole collection click with love is based around telling your story making memories capturing the moment uh, so everything's got a kind of photography and floral theme all the way through and the a5 stamps uh, stamp set is kind of where that that whole that all begins i know i know Nanaka, we, we we struggle don't we to to manage our our kind of oh we ha we've got to have this and this and this and i kept adding to it as much as she did so this is the A5 um, and it's got, as you can see, these two beautiful kind of florals here, a little film strip and you'll see this film strip motif recurring throughout. And this is what we mean by the bokeh. Uh, you've got these kind of circles which are beautiful. They're like, um, a bit like the gorgeous hexagons in Galactic Dreams. There's one of those kind of images or elements that I, I know Nanika loves her circles, but they're one of those elements that, you know, you, you can continue kind of stamping in backgrounds just for that touch of interest. Little dots, uh, like light flares, um, uh, a lovely kind of, um, kind of like a background element with, it, with the hexagons on there. 
And so you've got your flowers. Smile, love, and three, two, one. So that's the A5. Now, for me, I think the core of the collection is this A5 and this A6. And the reason I say that is the A6 is called Light Chaser. It's got this beautiful camera on it. So for me, if when we start to look at the, the papers and the rub-ons and we look at the, um, the kind of that core motif you've got, I think this camera combines beautifully with these florals. And what Nanek has done is given us a, a beautifully simple and clean line um so this camera it's got a like vintage look it's got like little crackles in it like leather um but it's it's a it's a really lovely image for coloring heat embossing or, or doing as you would like of course we've got the slightly bigger um film strip just trying to put next to the one on the a5 so again you've got that kind of ability to build and get your layers going and the film strips have got a little bit of distressing in them so really really love it that kind of slightly uh, aged look i won't read all the sentiments out on here but there is a beautiful one uh, a, a largish one which would be great for kind of backgrounds as well as focal points called light chaser uh, and that's what we've called the A6 stamp set. So it's that let your light shine, see beauty through the lens of magic, etc. So really, really beautiful. And then of course you see, you've got then that scaled down bokeh elements. So all different sizes. And I, that's for me is why I think these two stamp sets kind of are the, are the anchor for the collection. However, we also have, and I, my, my sense, my view of this is this A6 stamp set is beautiful and will also uh, work across other collections as well. Uh, you've got a lovely jewel font, a nice um, bold uh, kind of cursive here, but it says things that you are beautiful and all I see is magic, making memories, smile. So you can, you can see that it will have a much broader um, application beyond the collection itself so that's a lovely you know kind of essential stash builder um it will diane it will work well with blind's animals in fact blind has been sending me some animals uh today for uh what she's got coming in the new year and uh, it will work very well with those may i say it's fantastic um hi caroline yeah, the sentiments, Laura, are fantastic. You haven't got, have you got yours yet, lovely? You said this morning you hadn't, didn't you? And then this is an A7 um, a stamp, uh, which is, again, perfect background builder. So it, it's kind of almost, it's got a, it, it's deliberately distressed. And as with Olga's brilliant A7s, you've got an uneven edge. So, you know, you can put it anywhere on your uh, on your um, backgrounds and you're not going to have that straight line that's that's always a bit a bit difficult to then uh, soften and while i've got that there let me just find the stencil stencils so of course as is the, as is our way um when we do our stencils um again recurring motifs so we've got a stencil called backdrop which is a larger um, version of the A7. And uh, a little um, cheeky uh, heads up, this A7 uh, will be free with the collection on TV on Monday. So this, this will be one that I uh, throw in if you're, if you're buying the main collection. Excuse me. <coughs> so as you can see, I like the film strips, I like the bokeh circles, everything kind of builds and works together. And then there's some other stencils, and 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 the neck will laugh at the stencils, um, but uh, they they do take a long time to cut. Um, and I just say that to us, oh, the neck has taken ages to cut, but they are fabulous. So this one's called Click, and as you can see, why it's all for photography themed. Uh, brilliant for picking out elements if you just want elements that are going to kind of work with your focal point stamps. But equally, it, a fantastic um, background because it's it's going to work with that same theme. So you've got your oh, Naneki, tell me what this was. Is it your shutter speed or your light reading or something? That there's kind of measurements there. You've got your film strip, your numbers and again remember all of this all of this imagery is working across the, across the way because these circle numbers here will um are kind of a, an echo of what's in the stamp set you get where we're coming from you're not sorry naneka 
you you like having your very detailed stencils which are very beautiful to use so i, I will forgive you um and this one's called um focus uh and i i mean again this is this and backdrop the stencils even if photography and, and, and the theme uh, isn't your thing these are beautiful kind of all, all occasion a bit like the a6 stamp set these are these are kind of cross collection they're not uh, um, specific to photography and will give you beautifully detailed backgrounds uh, on any project yes i knew you weren't sorry you see so we've got three stencils um we've got those beautiful stamps uh we've got i'm, I'm holding off on the papers and rub-ons um got a die set and the die set is uh, this large film strip and it, we've done a film strip before uh funky fossil it's pretty much sold out if not completely sold out this is a very different look to it because it's got a brilliantly um and let me let me show you on a cut so you can see in real life it's got a beautifully deckled edge so it's kind of already it's no use is it something with a bit of colour it's um going to give you that kind of already that vintage worn feel really cool and in the um die set you've got two almost like kind of polaroid type frames but they've got a kind of um uh, detailing over, around the edge even to the point where you could probably thread ribbon through etc so you can see why that will go with the theme but will work across the piece with other things you already have as well. So that die set is called Celluloid. Thank you. Yeah, that's true. That's true, uh, Laura, about the decal there. That's a really good shout. Yeah, you could. You could just use it as a bit of a distress uh, border on things, couldn't you? And so there are the um, stamp stencils dies. And then we'll look at these beautiful papers. Um, so this is uh, the same uh, print as we've had now on our most recent pads, uh, Dreamscape and Vinsky. So it's a beautiful matte, matte finish. Um, and the work Nanek has done to give us a really beautifully layered look. I'm really hoping I'm going to do this justice on, on camera this evening. Um, as we've started to do, the aim is that you've almost kind of got a self-contained project in the pad. So you've got little tags and cuttable outable elements and sentiments too. All working with the theme and the motifs. You've got a cuttable outable page. I hope you don't mind me being at a weird angle. Um, that and that's, you know, for those of you, I know, I know I've seen from the samples I've got in front of me that some of the DT have cut out. I'm not sure I'm not patient, but they are beautiful. It's a lovely background paper if you don't want to cut it out yourself. And then say, although these are these are kind of the wrong way around, you'll you'll get the idea. You've got in these in these papers, you've got your film strips and florals. You've got these bokeh circle elements. You've got background falls and different scales, distressing. They are just so lovely. So you've got scope. If you're a journaler or somebody who likes scrapbooking, um, Nanek has designed this so that you know, you're going to be able to put a focal point and you've already got details framing your main image. Um, Do you think, Jane, do you think you, do you, think you might, <laughs> might be spending more money? <laughs> um, so the colour palette with this one um, is kind of, I'd say, I'd describe it, i describe everything in life in the Distress palette. And so this is kind of like your saltwater taffies, vintage photos, a bit of speckled egg, a bit of the softer teals. It's lovely. Absolutely. Look at that. So you can see they've all got these elements. You've got you've got the kind of the hexagons um, from that fragment um, uh, design in the background. You've got text. It really is one of those papers or paper pads that you need to have in front of you and look at. And I love how kind of crisp and sharp the focal um, graphics are as well. So they they are you know you can cut these out and use them independently of the backgrounds 
um, but they really pop from the page. Um, and look at this one, beautiful browns, rich browns, kind of a warm, really warm tones to them. And I'm sitting here trying to think how many designs there are in the pads. Um, I think it's, I think it's 12, three of each. Um, yeah, romantic is a good word, Diane, actually, for them. Um, yeah, it's yellow ochre, I love this. I think it, I'll, I'll count them later. Hi, Sam. We didn't mention rainbow, so you, 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 there's no need for you to tune in. <laughs> but yeah, it is. You can see. I think that takes me back to the beginning. Look at these florals. So this is very much, um, and as you can imagine, on the TV, they're in the main bundle, and they're, they're, you can buy them separately as well, because um, I have to admit, this is a very, very strokeable paper pads and very versatile because you've got your tags you've got your floral cuttables you can take elements out of the papers but you've got everything is going to tie together with those stamps perfectly and shall we have a look at the rub bonds it'd be rude not to wouldn't it oh yeah you have I, I can't just describe anything if it's not in distress colors Nobody, nobody else knows what I'm talking about, Donna. I'll have to come around to you when I'm I'm, I'm looking at colours, wallpaper and stuff. Um, right, so Summer Twilight, we had two, um, two sheets, very, very similar, but different, with um, the um, storyteller, Tell Your Story, Rob Bonds, there are four sheets, and the colour weighs are absolutely aligned with the paper pad so you've got let's see, what is the best way of doing this um i haven't got anything black to hand unusually other than what i'm wearing um is that that's well, kind of okay isn't it yeah that gives you so you've got a, this you've got this kind of what i'd call a speckled egg blue those soft, pretty florals, and and I'll use this in in, in a, a really quick demo. The, these rub-ons, but um, you know, these have got some large focal point images, which are going to absolutely hold their own. But you've got all the little dragonflies, sentiments, etc. So you can see, and um, this is a good way of seeing that these these images, because they're kind of solid, they will they're opaque. They will layer on top. But, you know, do lay your rub-ons on top of each other. They look amazing. So that's the speckled egg one, as I call it. And this is like a really lovely soft um, bundled sage green. <laughs> I've got a fair amount of stock, Jane. Don't you worry. Um, I didn't send it all to Spain, to Naneka. Um, so, yeah, isn't that beautiful? Again, just some touches. So, or you can see the colours are, are carrying through, can't you? And then what have we got? We've got this beautiful, beautiful soft pink. Oh, look at that. I mean, that's a card front. Um, this is definitely one of those. Um, buy more than one if you like them. Because A, I feel very strongly about using your rub-ons. You know, the adhesive on these will not last forever. It will last a very long time. But if you if you get these out of a drawer in five years' time, I can't guarantee this adhesive will be as good as it is now. So get them used. Use them on glass. Use them on MDF. Use them on fabric. They are just absolutely stunning. And this is the fourth one, um, which is more of that kind of goldy, fossilised amber, type colorway so you can see they're going to work perfectly with your papers and independently <laughs> we, we didn't say you had to leave us some they are absolutely beautiful so the next done an amazing job of giving us both kind of focal sized images on these sheets as well as tiny uh, accent elements and, and little um little sentiments which when you think about the dies and the kind of frames you've got and film strip, you know, they're going to work. Was that me? Am I too loud, Diane? Sorry. Did I do my, my, my laugh? is now I've got a very loud laugh. Um, hi, Sue. Lovely to see you. So, yeah. See you later, Jane. Thanks for tuning in.
So the, the last piece of this particular collection that I haven't got in front of me as a finish, uh, as a product, because I do think the design team have showcased it so beautifully, is um, an MDF film strip stand. So this is, a, it's exactly the same. I've tweaked it very slightly just for, for, to, for an MDF perspective, but um, see you later, Angela. So they, but they are that deckled edge photo frame, but big. So I think it's about 20 centimeters tall. This one's by Rachel, by the way. I mean, I could do a whole hour just pointing out all the gorgeousness on these photos, on, on these MDF uh, displays because they are stunning. So um, this one, I've taken off the, um, the base on this one. Is it, who's this by? It's by our Sarah. Bear with me. So um, a nice large base to them, just slots into the base. I've done a double width base so that you'll get two in a pack just to give it, because it's a tall element, just to give it a little more, little more bulk and substance at the bottom. But how amazing do these look? Is, aren't they just fabulous? I feel like these are mic drop samples. These are real total kind of show stoppers. Um, who's this by? I don't know, you see, even this one, Who's it by? It's by Ali. She's used the um, the rub ons on the back, so I mean it's absolutely beautiful whichever way you look at it. There's, you've got your film strips, you've got your florals. This is where I talk about the fussy cutting. Um, let me get now. These are the MDF frame. It is on the counter on Monday. It's not part of the collection because of course. Uh, in terms of scale, etc., A, I didn't want to throw everything, everybody in, in, in one bundle, but equally not everyone will want to make one necessarily. But I absolutely, I just, these are surpassed what I even had in my mind when I was thinking about um, this frame. And I showed it to uh, Nunu and she loved it. So um, the idea of scaling up and making an MDF stand. So as a piece of home decor, this is by our lovely Liz. You can just see, and she's got, you know, they've all, in fact, I think pretty much all of them have added the um, corresponding die to them because those deckled edges meet. But it, they're, they're just an absolute joy. If you if you want to enjoy your rub-ons and your papers uh, all year round, then they're a great way of showcasing it. But they are pretty cool, aren't they? I haven't made mine yet. I, I feel a bit intimidated now, to be honest. I, don't, I certainly won't be able to make one like this live in a show but uh oh they're just stunning thank you so much dt i don't know if i did say this one was from rachel didn't i and the, the only thing that rachel's done differently to the rest of the dt and i thought it was a really good idea is the frames come with obviously the front and the back uh, and every, in, my, in, my, in my head as well, every, the DT have done what I would do, which is put the back uh, directly to the, the front. But I don't know if you can see, Rachel's added some spacing between it, between them. So she's added extra dimension. And then you've got things like, oh, can you even see that? I don't know if you can. Um, she's used the, the film strip die with acetate, but curled it like you would do on a film reel. They're just, they're just so cool. I hope none of them want this, these back because they're not going to get them. I love them too much. So, yes, the MDF frame is another part of that overall concept. Not part of the main bundle, but um, if, you if you really uh, fancy having a go at decorating something, maybe as a gift uh, for somebody else for Christmas or actually just something you're going to enjoy around your own home, um, I think these are pretty unusual. So, yeah, it's, an, it's a nice add on to the main collection. Now, because they didn't just do these, although to be honest, these are so big and beautiful. Um, I would not have blamed the design team if they'd said they didn't have time to do any more. So I'll show you Alicia's. Um, this is amazing too. I, um, I had this on display at, um, at Stumps, the Stumps by Me demo day, um, Ali, because it's just beautiful as well. So how lovely to have the white, the white on the um, 
MDF stands, so all the colours from the papers really pop as well. You, although everyone's done an amazing job, I think it's very, um, it's hard not to create something really striking. Of course, sorry, I'm rambling on. I'll, I'll move on to the other samples. You don't need to use a collection with them. You could put photos. You could have family photos in them as well. So don't, you know, um, don't think that they are, it's obligatory to <laughs> to use these images in there. But, you know, however you display it, it's cool. It'd be a cool way to put family photos, wouldn't it? Right, let me show you a few other pieces, bits and pieces, and then I was going to have a, just a very quick play because um, I haven't had a chance to do anything yet. I'm, I, I'm going to devote my um, weekend to demos for you on Monday, but um, I haven't had a chance to get anything made, so I'm so lucky to have these in front of me. And I know I've got more cool samples coming, but these are the ones that um, uh, I've got here now. So the design team, as you know, will be sharing these. Olga's on a super, a super cool reel with samples on as well. So I'll make sure that they're shared. Um, and you know we do our regular lives. So uh, one of the things I, I keep meaning to say is if ever you see a sample, you think, oh, wow, I'd love to see that, how that was put together, then do message me and I can I... I can either ask the DT member to do the live or I'll have a go myself. So this is by our Ali and she's used that wonderful uh, focus stencil in the background you can see and then all the all the circles from the bokeh sets, the camera taking centre stage. Lovely. I knew it was Ali's because she's used a rainbow of colours. Um, and then here you see it. Is this Ali as well? Remember DT, this is because I picked them up in, in bunches because <laughs> I sometimes feel like, oh no, I don't necessarily show all the samples. So I've got the um, the fragment here in gold embossed on the papers. But again, how different because the drama of the black. I'm, I'm having to, to kind of stroke it. So yeah, so Ali's cut out one of those graphic elements from the paper pad and put it onto black. But then here, this is Sally. I'm going to move past you in a minute, Alan. Go to somebody else. Um, she's used the papers, but then got the white de put white details on top of it. Use one of the big florals from Boca Flowers. So you can get so many different looks. And I say you don't need to have a camera anywhere near it if you want to just focus on the florals from the A5. Uh, is this the one you mean, Nunu? Is this the rainbow one you mean, which is Ali's trademark style? So she's used the focus stencil with black paste over a rainbow background. The dyes just left them white. How cool is that? So, yeah, very, very cool. I'm going to flick forward so I make sure I get all the samples in. And this one's from Rachel. I, I knew that it was from Rachel without looking, actually. Um, so I think Rachel... She might, if she's on, she might correct me. <gasps> Do you know what I haven't done? I haven't said. Oh, um, yeah, Mr. Earwig would look fab in your um, in the in that frame, Julie. I love Mr. Earwig. I need more photos of him. Just fabulous. Um, that is, that's um, Julie's dog, by the way. Two, I'll give away. Oh, so I'm so dozy. I keep forgetting to say these things. Um, I'm going to give away two sets of rub-ons and two complete collections. So that's four giveaways. So that's four giveaways, two of the, two sets of rub-ons to two people and two complete collections. So please share, like, tell people about the collection. What I will do is I will announce the winners of those of those giveaway prizes and i'll put it in the facebook group as well um on friday so you've got from now to friday um to uh, uh kind of obviously you know, by commenting in this live you're already in with a chance of winning and obviously any comments that people leave after the live will also be in with a chance of being one of those four winners that i'll announce on friday and uh, Ali's on the chat on the chat, and she's the most organised person I know. So I know she'll give me a nudge if I forget to do it. 
Yes, I can, can't you tell, Angela? It, 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 there's just something about Rachel's work that gives you that sense of layering. So I think she's cut some of the film strip paper film strips out of the paper pad and rolled them. Fabulous. Uh, oh, I'm flicking and flicking and flicking. And then Ali, uh, this is Alicia, sorry, not Ali, um, has done this beautiful card. Look at that. And this is a very Alicia colour combo as well. That beautiful kind of soft pastels. That lovely um, background. And she's got an, um, glossy accents on the camera elements. So cool. And then uh, Sarah. Look at this. Oh, my. Um, isn't that amazing? So, so Sarah's done here. She's got sentiment going around. She's made a wreath from the flowers. I never even thought of doing that. So it's that repeating. She's got the film strips in the corners. That is pretty cool, isn't it? Thank you, Ali. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. Thank you. You'll, you'll keep me on track. I know you will. Who's this by? Because it's got great, great layering on. This is by Sarah. Uh, I don't know if you can see. So she's layered up all the elements of the camera and giving it real dimension. So it really does um, kind of protrude from the card. She's great with dimension is, is uh, Sarah. It's always, it's always something very 3D about her projects. So it's a beautiful one. And then I want to show you, there's a couple of beautiful makes as well from Liz. I'm having a delve into my, um, my box of samples here. Uh, and I know Liz has done a, a video this, so I know it will pop up in the Facebook group um, at some point in the next few days. Um, so she's done a beautiful, beautiful journal or, or scrapbook or photo album. I mean, you can imagine the usage you're going to get out of this collection for that very reason. So she's obviously done done the, um, the cover here with the cameras uh, echoing each other. And then she's got capture every moment papers it was beautifully put together um so you can imagine how you'd be able to actually if you wanted to make this into something you were going to give or keep for yourself you'd be able to put actual photos in into these spaces just so lovely that's really cool um Robons, of course it's really hard to point out the Robons because they are just so they just melt. They just become ever so um, integral to the project. They, you, they really, when you, they're like on there here, the sentiments on here, but you, you wouldn't know they weren't part of the paper. So, yes, yeah, so Liz is on a cracking job with this journal. Beautiful. It's really lovely. Liz. So that's from our Liz. And then she made this, which I thought was super cute. So a little kind of, could be, it could be an ATC card holder. Um, just a little box with the papers on and then each of the frames with flowers from the stamp set in there but again it could be whatever you wanted yeah a lot of work do you know so much work has gone into these samples it is absolutely amazing oh Therese I bet you could create something as beautiful as this today just having the time isn't it really Oh, yeah, and talking of photos, is this, this is from Liz, isn't it? Yes. So you can imagine this could be a page from within that journal that I just showed you from Liz, but she's got her, her two little fur babies on there. It's a, some memories stay with us forever. And even got all of it. So she's cut away the centre of the camera and put a picture in there, which I thought was a really clever idea. So you say, use real photos with them. Um, Mr. Earwig would definitely be the star of that page. And one more, and then I'm going to do a little, oh no, two more, because this is beautiful too. And then I'm going to do a, a very, very quick demo with you. Um, wine glass, Julie. Um, they wouldn't, they would not, um, I put them, I don't think, I wouldn't wash them, I don't think, unless you sealed them with something. Um, for example, you see, for example, this is summer twilight and I put it on a jar here, but I'll use this for decorative purposes and I won't really wash it. So I don't think 
they're hard to get off. Um, you would really need to scratch at them, but I don't know how um, confident I'd be about actually using them on glassware that you're then going to wash. I hope that helps. Um, but yeah, I do, I do like to use them on lots of other glass things that are going to be on display or acetate. You can put them on acetate in a, in a frame um, or have a photo. Uh, here's a, I'm just thinking about it. Have a photo in a frame, but then put some rub-ons on the glass uh, just to frame the, the photo. That'd be a beautiful look as well. Is this Rachel? Yeah, I thought it was Rachel. Um, it had a Rachel-esque vibe. So she's got, again, the dyes in there, some of the stamps. And a final, it's not the final one I've got, but the final one I'll share today is this is from uh, Alicia. Beautiful. Look at this. Again, completely different colourways. You know, you've got the rich kind of um, colourway there from the papers and the slightly vintage vibe that, that Rachel does so well. And then you've got Ali's kind of pinks and blues, pretty pastels uh, and the dye framing. And you see these here um, that I am rubbing and I didn't I almost kind of don't realise that they're not part of the papers and they're rub-ons in the corners. Is that a rub or is that paper? I think that's paper in the middle and these are rub in the corners. Hey, they're cool. I hope you like them, everybody. I know Naneka spent a long time, particularly the papers, getting them right and getting them in the way that she um, envisaged them um, for that layering. Because Naneka is very, uh, in her makes, in her mixed media style, um, does a lot of layering, a lot of detail. Um, and what she's giving us in the papers is some of that already built in, but because they're that beautiful litho printed matte paper, you know, you can just take it from there. Oh, you know, I've never made a waterfall card, Therese. I, I don't know, I'm not very good at measuring. If it needs measuring, I'm not, I, I, it always goes wrong. Aren't they pretty, Nunu? It's a shame you don't I, that you don't have someone to take to the fair um, this weekend because I think I'm 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 going to be at Port Sunlight. If any any of you are watching, I know not of you in the UK. If any of you are watching or going, then obviously I will be having lots of these samples with me on the stand for so you can always come and have a stroke and look at them cl up close. But I'll be I'll be so excited about having these film strip stands with me because they'll make me look good. Right, shall we do a very, very quick demo? I don't want to take up too much of your evening. You know, I can waffle on, as that Tony Darrett would say, but I, I want, did want to just have a little bit of a play. And um, if you don't mind indulging me, then it will just be, give me a chance just to start warming up ready for Monday. Ready for Monday shows trying to find a surface that I can put things onto. So what I thought I'd do is a very quick bit of uh, stamp masking because, you know, I, I was saying well, at the very beginning, we've got the beautiful florals and you've got the camera. But as you've seen from all the papers, the, the idea is that motif is that the florals are kind of, um, you know, really kind of um, working around the camera itself. So I thought I would just do a little bit of very basic masking, which I'm sure all of you are, is a technique you're all familiar with, but just worth a quick reminder. And of course the camera, um, is a very, very easy shape to cut out. So uh, to make a mask of the camera is super easy. And then you can you can use that even if you didn't want the floors, you want other elements behind it, you've got that there. So with masking, what you want to do first and foremost is stamp your focal point and then work backwards. So whatever you stamp and then mask is going to stay in the foreground and all the other stamping will sit behind it. So let's get a, and I've already, I've already done this and got one coloured in, so don't you worry, it won't take me a long time. Oh, hi Isabel. Oh, did you miss it? Do you know, it's probably just as well, because I don't want to put too much temptation in your way. I think I've only just sent an order off to you. <laughs> so let's 
I've been stamping the camera in in a brown uh, versus fine Claire because it I just think it's got a, a bit of a vintage vibe to it. And so acrylic block. A healthy dose of uh, brown ink and whack that down. I did, didn't I, Isabel? Yes, I knew I knew I'd sent you one recently. It is a beautiful collection though, I have to admit. Right, hopefully that's taken. Beautiful, look at that. It's a nice size, it's a nice focal point size. You know, if you're gonna scale it up and add other elements to it, then it will absolutely hold its own on an art journal page and a bigger project. So uh, I use um, the Clarity masking sheets partly because, well, there's two reasons really. One is I think they've got a good, good um, sticky life to them. They're a bit more expensive than, I think I've said to, to Julie in the past, they're a bit more expensive than some of the uh, masks, but they do, they do bear repeat usage. And also they've got a slightly plastic covering to them. So um, some masking materials i've tried in the past i've, I've found that the sometimes the, the ink bleeds and um and the, the ink gets onto the image that i'm trying to protect so the clarity has always worked for me um i don't stock it um, this isn't something i'm, I'm um, necessarily selling but for those of you in the uk uh, or maybe even further afield i don't know where else they, they sell it um, this is the material I tend to use. Particularly good in terms of using it then. And if, for example, I've wanted to do a stencil background on this now, and I was going to put a lot of ink um, over the image, I'd feel very confident that that, that camera was going to stay protected. That's just a little crafty opinion for me. So let's put this beautiful floral around our camera. I could, um, I'm gonna say, I'm, I'm kind of doing this relatively quickly, but um, you know, you can see, can't you, just by laying, oh, maybe you can't, cause my lighting's so rubbish, but um, I, could, I could have the flowers going all the way around this camera. I'm just gonna stamp once because you'll get the idea, but you could build this on the image up um as as much as you want to once you've got that central that focal point image i could put my focus circles behind it I could put these dots behind it everything will sit behind the, the the film strip everything will sit behind the um this first image now therese if you um were looking at this and thinking okay so I'm going to have flowers behind it, but I want film strip behind the flowers. So I want to have my flowers, but then I want to have some film strips appearing. All you need to do would be to stamp this flowers, as I'm about to do now, and then cut out a mask for the flowers, adhere that over the flowers. So both the images are masked, and then you put your film strips. You go a level, you go a layer behind the flowers. Um, so it's, a, it's very much just about working backwards and um, start with your focal image, protect it, go to your next level, protect that, and then go behind again if you wanted to. I hope that makes sense. So I just moved that stump a little bit as I was chattering on, but um, you'll get the idea. So you can see when I lift this, these flowers, the flowers that are on the plastic here won't appear. But if I wanted to have a film strip coming out behind this flower, all I'd need to do is cut a mask, stick that on top, and then do exactly what I've just done. I hope that makes sense. So you can see your flowers are now sitting behind your camera. So if you wanted to build this as a card, that was flat, you weren't cutting out and sticking on and adding adding layers, then you'd be able to work around this now, keep the masks on, work around it. Um, 
Oh, thanks, Liz. Are you? Have you got a project with the masking on? Um, I love making scenes with masking. Uh, you know, kind of having your characters and then your, your, your trees or your backgrounds behind it. So, or um, having your character and then doing a cloudy sky stencil behind the character if you want to keep everything flat. So it's a really good technique to use. Now, I've already done this better, actually, because I say this, this flower's moved a very little bit. It's annoying me. Uh, I've already done this and coloured it in because this is really the main purpose of this line, to do a full demo. But can you see exactly the same? I've now just added distress oxides. Well, it's exactly the same. The flower's in a slightly different position, but they're totally the same effect by masking and then cutting it all out together. And I've used distress oxides to do my colouring in, watercolour. And then I'd done a, 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 a shonky camera that hadn't worked in an initial stamp. So all I did was I then um, coloured and cut out the centre, the lens of that. So we can add that on with a little bit of foam tape just to give it a bit of a pop. So not as elaborate as Sarah's 3D camera, but gives you the idea. Of course, you could put glossy accents on that lens like uh, Alicia did, which I think looks really cool. Um, this is easy to line this up because you've got your little elements which you can just mirror. You wouldn't have needed to colour the centre of the bottom layer in, but um, quite like to do it if I can, just because, as with here, if I haven't lined it up entirely, You've not got any telltale white peeking out. So there we go. So I've got some dimension now on my camera. So, of course, it's time for some papers. I've got one of uh, Stumps by Me's gorgeous cards here, card blanks. It's in a lovely teal colour. And what I've already got, you know, cut out to avoid the dilemma of trying to do this live, um, is uh, one of the beautiful papers from the paper pad. So you can see here how neutral, as in um, easy they are to use. Uh, I've cut off the focal point. I've kept it, of course, for somewhere else. But just those colours alone, if I map them onto craft card um, with the teal base, all those colours are just going to kind of follow through. Let's add a bit of detail to this paper, though, because that's what Nuneka's intention is, is that you, you've got something that's beautiful to work with in its own right, but you can, you can then go beyond that. <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh. I think, as Ali did all those amazing samples with fo in, uh, the focus stencil, I'm going to use a backdrop stencil. I know, that's the thing. To, but then imagine, Ali, I get all the samples and then I think, oh, crikey. Where do I start? Everyone's, everyone's done it all here. But it's a great jumping off point, actually. You're, everybody's samples just start off different ideas don't they so let's use some brown so this as you can see this stencil is quite a, a delicate stencil this isn't going to give you solid patterning so it's a nice one to use on what is already uh, a pretty background and i'm looking for a brush that looks like it's vaguely brown here we go so i've got grand espresso here Oh, let's see how this how this plays out. So I'm not going to cover the whole background. I just, again, as with everything, I want a hint, a little bit more pattern just to draw your eye in. Let's see what we've captured there. I've had my nails done and I don't know, I can't pick anything up. Can you see that? That's pretty. Let me add a little, let me go a bit further down. So I watch um, 
uh, Nunu's got a kind of Patreon group, and so I'm part of that. And this is all, you know, you've just got to, when you're thinking about these layers, not think about um, how much of it's going to be visible at the end, because bits will be, but they're not, the purpose is not to really kind of jump right to the, right to the front. So this is a lovely backdrop stencil to give you a bit of texture. I went for the, I've got the grey and the teal, Donna. <laughs> it is a lovely colour, actually. It's an unusual teal. Uh, it's an unusual colour for a car blank, but uh, I normally go for more neutral colours with car blanks, so I, I know what you mean. So let's then build some stamped layers on top of the stenciling. Um, musing, musing. So let's go with, yeah. Let's go with these fabulous circles. So, so easy to use. I have a feeling I'll be using them on lots of projects generally. Because I'm a bit of a circle fiend. Now I could, to, to highlight the boat, I won't do it actually now, but to highlight that kind of bokeh feel, and you can see this light colour here, I could do out my stamping of these circles in white just to, again, give that contrast. But I'll stick with the browns for now. Um, but that will be a lovely way of giving you that kind of uh, light and dark. I'm working over my stenciling. The intention for me here is really to do a composition that goes on the diagonal, which is, oh, I think I often do that. So this isn't about now scattering the stamping all over the place. This is about actually um, laying my stamping and stenciling to the extent that I could do a second generation, that the eye has some very clear places to, to settle. I know I'm telling you all things that you know, but I can't suppose I'm, I'm talking about my process aloud as I just explain why I'm placing things where I, where I am. So it's got some lovely detailing around these circles. Let's go down here because my, um, my camera is going to be in this corner. So the smaller one so um i might just peek out behind the camera oh there we go i could keep you you get the impression i could keep going with these circles they're just fabulous um but you can see and i would i would also keep going a little bit more with the stamping and stenciling i'm just giving you an idea here um you can see as well um the thing i often say when i'm stamping is stamp off the the page again just giving people a feeling like it the the composition extends beyond the actual card front let's add a little bit of brown blue i could as well and it would be a lovely uh, lovely look uh, I could distress the edges, as in, you know, with a distressing tool to give them a bit of a frayed and curled look, because um, I'm going to put it onto craft cards. That would be quite nice as well. But for speed, I will just add a little bit of brown ink around the edges, just to make sure it doesn't just look like a piece of pattern paper. There's kind of butterflies in this paper as well. Just gorgeous. And this is everything. When you when you kind of cut them, the papers down, you see different bit, different things, and then you can highlight the, the the elements of the design that you really like. So very very simply, you can imagine texture paste, heat embossing. All those other techniques that, you, that we all love to do would work on this paper because it is um, completely matte. You'd be able to do that. Um, so I'm just using ink to, to get an effect quickly, but the design team have done much more than that. Let me 
give myself a little bit of clean space here. So we've got some crafts. We've got our layer above. We've got our layered or masked camera, which I think will look nice. So we've got, because I've gone with lots of teals, the, the pink in the flowers just gives you a little bit of, um, uh, a bit of difference. You could colour them in like some like salvage patina, but I, I just wondered whether that would all then become too much of the same. And then what I wanted to do when I was thinking earlier this afternoon is create a little border down the edge here uh, with the film strip die, this deckled film strip. And all I've done is I've actually I did this at the demo day on um, Saturday because I was having a play. So all I've done is inked, um, might be Grand Espresso, onto the um, film strip die to give it that brown look. Bit of vellum. And all I'm going to do is adhere the vellum. So that's going to pop against our background. And then we'll put some rub-ons in. You knew it was coming. What am I going to put there? Yeah, it is an amazing collection, Rachel. Have you just tuned in, Rachel? Because we were looking at your awesome uh, film stand earlier. Absolutely stunning. Right, so I'm just catching. I'm probably going to cut this down a little bit, um, but I'm just catching the edges. Let me stick, stick this onto the vellum. Let me see how dirty my mat is. And then, of course, vellum is a beautiful base. You could as well use acetate to give a real film strip look. But it's a beautiful base to put our rub-ons onto, isn't it? I'm just going to give a little bit of, little bit of the back. The vellum will give a little bit of a barrier to the pattern beneath. So. Where are these rubbons? I think I'll go pink. So we'll pick up the flowers. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a little. So as you know, you all know this, but I am. Um, I like to um, just repeat it for anybody who hasn't used rubbons before. They all come with their own carrier sheet. Uh, my recommendation is you leave them with that carry sheet. The adhesive on these is fabulous. Uh, and it does mean that if I, for example, left them laying down on my glass mat, even without burnishing, I'd end up getting some of them adhering to the glass mat. So keep those, keep that um, carry sheet as a way of stopping them sticking where you don't want them to. And then just literally cut around the elements that you're going to use on your project so try and keep them together probably I, I will be keeping mine in a kind of wallet once I've opened it one of the nice things about these designs like um all the summer twilight ones is Nanek has given us lots of splashes and watercolor bits so you don't need to be too careful about what you what you cut because you if you catch little bit little elements little blobs or splatters it will just look like you added them deliberately so here's a butterfly, pink butterfly, uh, and I've taken it off the carry sheet now, so it's obviously translucent. You can see the adhesives there on the back, and I'm going to add it to my um, vellum. And I don't know, oh, where's my lolly stick gone? I never, I always lose the lolly stick, so you don't need a lolly stick per se, but I just... It could, one comes in the pack, uh, just uh, just for your info. You don't need one. You could use an embossing tool. You could use lots of different things to give you that burnish. But there is one there, which I always seem to lose every time I go live. So it doesn't take a lot of burnishing. Um, and then if you literally just peel away that clear, um, that clear cover, do it carefully the, you, with a little one like this it won't matter because you'll you will have uh, transferred it all across but if you're working on something like this for example it's quite easy sometimes to miss a bit so if you peel away um very slowly 
anything that hasn't transferred will still be on this sheet and you just lay it back down and um, give it a little, little rub over. So there's a couple of butterflies on this set, which I shall quickly use here. And let me see, do I want to put them all on the camera, uh, all on the film strip, or do I have some of them around the camera? Uh, where do my camera there it is? See, I've covered, I'm going to cover that. What an absolute divot. Oh no, just about see it. Let's put this one here then. <laughs> Let's put this one here. So it looks like you've caught some um, butterflies on the film. What an auntie. You get the idea though. And you, these rub-ons, you'll use every last bit of these sheets because even if it's just the splatters, they'll just add something, a little touch. So there you go. So can you see how delicate they look? And they just look like they're part of the part of the vellum, part of the film strip. Let me do a bit of sticking down. Sam, I can't believe I've come up with an idea you haven't thought of. Well, I'll take that as a win. The question is, Sam, are your samples... On... I've stuck to the map. Are your samples on their way to me? That's the question for you, young lady. I know you've made them. So I've cut, actually these, um, I don't know what I've got on my map. Um, these uh, card blanks and uh, stamps by me are seven by seven. So I have cut this one down a little bit to go with the project. So they're a good size. I know stamps by me do um, rectangular ones as well. I can't remember what the size is. I just got the square because uh, I do, I think probably, by and large, I'll make more square cards. How beautiful is this? Let me put this vellum away, otherwise it'll look a bit odd. And so I was thinking it might look a little... So again, with vellum, you want to try and avoid the adhesive being visible behind, but with the, photo, the film strip, you've got these nice little um, areas where you can just touch a bit of glue on there. It doesn't need much. So if I put these here, and so back to the point I was making earlier, we've um, you know we've covered over some of that stamping at the bottom of the bokeh circles, but you can see them behind the vellum. So you just even that, even those little bits of stamping will just customize your paper. I'm tempted to put this on three on the foam, on yeah, on three D foam add a little bit more oomph. I don't know if I've got a sentiment prepped. I, will, I won't um, add a sentiment then I'll add one later and put it in the um, group, Facebook group when I've finished the card. But you'll, what I wanted to do, how cool is this? So I'm going off the edge of the card slightly only because I don't want to lose this little butterfly here. Oh, what I think I'll probably do um, a little bit later is I'll put a third butterfly from the set and I'll put it here so that pink will just follow around. Um, and I could add a sentiment um, in the pinks or I could add a sentiment from that gorgeous A6 stamp set with the, big, with the bold wording. So that's, that's the dilemma I'll work on. But the thing I was just thinking would be a beautiful finishing touch is let's add a rub onto the envelope. So if you were going to give this, then you'd have the design carrying through. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling very um, extravagant using a rub on on my envelope. But... 
we can. While I've got stock, <laughs> I can use it. So I do hope you'll join me on Monday on Creating Crafts. I try and think of demos that will give you ideas for using the using the products. I will do something with the MDF frame. Obviously, I'll have some of it prepped ahead of time. It's just it's one of those projects that is a bit little bit more. Um, it's more difficult to put into the time frame of a TV show, but I'll certainly do a live or a YouTube video decorating one. We can be a bit more leisurely. So this is a slightly bigger rob on, so I thought it'd be nice just to show you uh, how easy, although the little butterflies just go on super quickly, the bigger, the bigger designs equally don't take any time at all to, um, to transfer across. And you can take as much time as you want. Just try and get some pressure across all of it. You'll get a feel very quickly for um, how 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 or whether the um, design is is transferring. I'm almost trying to. I'm hoping that something doesn't, so I can show you. But I think this one's gone across. It has. So you can see. You know it's transferred when it's all clear, and those little dots there were off the envelope. So. I've got everything off it and it's on my envelope. So that's, I'd, ha I'd have to really like somebody to put that on an envelope for them. Um, but can you see then that if you send that to somebody, how beautiful it would be? So, yeah. Rachel Harris, your frame was stunning. I don't know where I just put it, Rach. I was going to show it again. Oh, you'll have to, oh no it's here so from my basic uh, demo to Rachel's extravaganza look at that every flower known to man on this one beautiful so many elements that you, you see as you look at it um, but how quick and easy is it then to create I think a really gorgeous card that could easily be a journal page with something inspirational as a sentiment. I have to think about what words to add. Um, I'll send it to you, Isabel. I will. I'll send it to you. Yeah, you're worth it, lovely. So, um, <laughs> thank you everyone for staying with me, for watching and looking at the products. Remember the giveaway, four, uh, four prizes, two sets of rub-ons, two of the full collection. Comment below, share it with friends, get everyone to comment and join in. And on Friday, I'll uh, announce who, who the winners of those. I will let you know, as always, as soon as the products go available on Create and Craft at the on-air price. So nobody buys things um, before uh, the best price is available. And the DT will have all of these stunning samples sh to share with you on the Facebook group in the next um, the next few days to keep you keep you inspired. Um, if she's still on, good luck, Nuneka, for the fair, and thank you for an amazing collection that I think has inspired everybody this evening. Um, and I know Nuneka will be doing makes and sharing ideas with it as well when she gets a moment to take a breath. So lovely to have your company. Hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up if you're on YouTube and um, I shall post a picture of this in the group a little bit later and I shall see you all very, very soon. Enjoy the rest of your evening and thanks for joining me. Bye.